day three. So day one, prep, sanded back all of the VJ lining, gapped, filled, sanded all of our gap, oh not gaps, what am I on about? Sanded all of our bonk filler. And yesterday, <clears throat> as you've seen, I got a fair bit of footage there spraying out our tint prep. So spray pretty much everything with a nice solid coat of primer using an FFLP 514, so 10-inch fan, 14th hour tip, you get a nice film build um, to start off as a base. We gave all of our undercoat very light sand, especially interior-wise, that way it's nice and smooth when we then apply a top coat. Which brings us to top coat today. So it's raining, I can't tackle the outside of the pool cabana, so we're gonna be doing all the VJ lining inside. I'm gonna spray out two coats of top coat, and then I'm gonna tape around the windows, and we're gonna be spraying with the tint trim product as well. As I said, we've sprayed our tint primer or our tint prep. It's all done. I'm working at pretty low pressure. I don't work off PSI exactly. I work within a range because depending on what hose length you're running, how big your pump is, what kind of flow rate of the machine you're working with, that's going to change the pressure you'll be sitting at as well as temperature on the day, your viscosity of your paint. These are just variables that change. Again, I'm spraying with a Graco Magnum Pro X19. We're spraying tints, wall paint, very excited. Let's smash it. Respirator, wear that as well. So this tint refer to the stars is such a nice kind of light beige -y color that on a whim we decided instead of spraying this in the so fresh so clean which is like a nice pure white by tint uh, we're just gonna blend in the windows because they're not really much of a feature is them also just a little bit of airflow into the cool pool cabana if it's the middle of the day so i've switched to a smaller tip i'm using a 210 i probably would use a 310 if i had one on hand just for a slightly wider fan i find it's a little bit less concentrated of a paint stream but to compensate i've drop my pressure down a little bit, not to the point where it's gonna tail, but just to give me a little bit more flexibility because I have to do multiple passes on each side to hit these bits of decorative trim. So as you can see, there's a bit of overspray already just from the wall coat, which I wasn't being careful with whatsoever, but now this is being blended, I know I can just smash this coat out I'm gonna wait for the windows to dry. And then since everything's then being first coated, we'll go over everything again. <laughs> See already with the 210 because it's such a narrow fan width especially when i'm doing these sections here i have to do multiple passes to get coverage if i had a 310 with a six inch fan width would have been a bit thicker not thicker a bit wider right now you can see i'm gonna i'm starting to get a few runs there just from those passes counteract that i'm gonna give it a light stand after first coat anyway and when we come back i'll probably dip my pressure a bit more and move a tad faster and just be mindful that you don't have to cover everything 100 first coat because you have second coat to come back to and get that proper coverage that you need I always gotta remind myself that because I get a bit trigger happy and I wanna just cover everything so it looks finished. Um, but yeah, this is where we learn. We learn from our mistakes, especially if it's not our project. Sorry, mum and dad. Progress report, that's first coat fully sprayed now with the windows as well in the same color. So it's looking pretty good. Again, it's gotta be really conscious of not trying to get complete coverage on first coat. Um, Cause you can see here, Got a bit, put that on super heavy accidentally with the 210. So a few too many passes, that's what can happen. We will make mistakes, that's okay. So I'm gonna let that dry now. I'm gonna give it a light sand. Got the Deros there, I'm gonna hit it with 180 grit. I'll just sand those strips off, try and get it even. A lot of people ask, what do you do between coats? I always cover it with a rag or a sheet so I don't let any dust in any sediment in. I submerge my gun in water between coats and I also keep the machine under pressure in spray position. So what that means is because it's a pressurized system, there's actually no air technically getting into that. So 
so I don't have any concerns about paint drying in the lines and to leave it for a couple of hours or an hour um, just to wait for a coat to dry that's more than okay. All right we've let this coat dry it's been quite humid today so we did have to wait a little bit longer so I caught up with a mate for coffee and now we're back. So as I said, I had this submerged in water so the lines weren't going to dry. I've switched back to an FFLP 514 to now go over second coat on our final coat here with our top coat acrylic. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut in all these corners first as I would brushing but with spray and then I'm going to start overlapping the VJs. So let's get it done. As I said, it's hot, it's humid, I want to smash this out. I want to have a nap. So that's now after two coats and we're just letting this one dry but it just looks fantastic. So that's again with the 514 tip. We're using tent interior lotion but it's just so nice like you can't get that finish with a brush or a roller. You really can't. So that's all going to dry nice and evenly now. As I said we've got a few little bits to sand back on the windows. I'll come back later and finish second coat on windows. Now I'm going to go flush the machine and we'll get happening 